As you cross the Giulia River in Friuli, Venezia, Giulia, in northeastern Italy, you head towards the Slovenian border, and you drive through vineyards green and waving in the Bora winds famous in the area. In front of you rises up through the vineyards a winery, one that has been run for three generations by women. That winery? Well, it's Vigna Petrusa. Hi there, I'm Jacqueline Avero, where we comb the world of wine looking for small production, high quality wines. And of course, that search has led us to find Vigna Petrusa. They are so close to Slovenia that at times, walking through the winery's vineyards, one cell service will cross over to a Slovenian carrier. The Petrusa family has been farming this land in Propoto since the 1800s and the land was first used for their self-sustaining farm and flour mill. The few vines that were there made wine only for mostly personal consumption. But when Pina, the first generation winemaker, and eventually her daughter Hilde, the second generation, took over, it was slowly transformed into the vineyards and winery that we know today. Hilde, shown here in her vineyards, started her career out actually working as a school teacher. However, she could only think about returning home to take over the family business from her mother. She worked to bring back the indigenous Friuli varieties and was a driving force helping to revive the nearly extinct native variety Schiopettino that was so important to her family in the past. She now works side by side with her own daughter, third generation Francesca, who we can meet now. What are you showing us? Uh, this is Chiopettino and you can see how the berries are changing color from yellow to red. Oh, cool. It's called Verasian in English. Uh, okay, Verasian. Verasian. And we're, um, we're at uh, Vigna Petrusa. Yeah, we are in Vigna Petrusa, in Friuli, Colli Orientali del Friuli, and uh, this is our Schiopettino vineyard, and then uh, uh, the company is just uh, down the road, and uh, the hills that you can see in the background, uh, that is Slovenia, oh, because we are wow. just very close to the Slovenian border. So this is like the extreme uh, northeast of Italy. Cool. Back in the winery, one of Hilde's favorite techniques is to utilize the Bora winds of Friuli to help air dry some of her grapes. And it is up in this barnyard loft where that magic happens. So she um, uses for some of her wines, um, like uh, Picolit uh, Desiderio, which is one of her white wines. And the Rosco. Yes. She uh, she air, air dries the grapes, and she does this. Uh, what happens with air drying is that it imparts kind of more of a smoother, richer taste in in the wines, and um, and so she Hilde reminds me a bit of a cook in a kitchen, in, in that or a chef really, in that she decides to. Uh, to try doing different things depending upon the, the type uh, the type of grape to um, to make it taste to her liking. And with windows like this overlooking the vineyards, what an amazing way for Hilde to work with the native Bora winds in crafting her native wines. So the Scopatino Friulano. And then she has vineyards um, around also Picolit and Sauvignon Blanc, uh, Ribola Gialla. And Slovenia is right there on the end of her property there, Slovenia. So we're in uh, northeast um, Italy, in Friuli, and um, there's just a lovely uh, wind. Um, that uh, is known as the Bora. It's coming from the Karnik uh, Alps, just north of here, and it's perfect for air drying grapes. 
which is one of the techniques that Hilde uses when making more wines. At Vina Petrusa, their love of their land leads to a deep commitment to sustainable farming practices. As artisan farmers and winemakers very much in touch with the land their family has owned for generations, they recognize their crucial role in preserving biodiversity and promoting the conservation of not only their vineyards, but also the surrounding area. And an important part of their vision of sustainability ties into how things progress in the cellar. Hilde believes wholeheartedly in native yeast fermentation for her wines because she feels that this is the best way for her to represent her Friuli terroir and the precious grapes that she gives so much care to cultivate. This commitment to sustainability in the vineyard and authenticity in the cellar has led to international acclaim for the winery. From decanter to Japan, their wines receive medals and mentions, such as Venus writer Ian de Agata proclaiming Vigna Petrusa to be, quote, one of Italy's best and most under-the-radar estates, unquote. And what are these wines? Well, they make a selection of white wines, such as the native Friulano and Ribola Gialla, to even international varieties, such as Sauvignon Blanc, and we see blends such as Ricenza and even sweet wines like the Noble Rot Picolite or the Passito Desiderio. However, it is in the red wines where Vigna Petrusa shines, and that is Schiopettino. With an unoaked version to a Reserva and several other Schiopettinos with various amounts of oak aging in between, you can see Hilde Petrusa's dedication to this variety come through. And what of Prepoto and Friuli? Well, the area is a bit of a crossroads from Eastern Europe into the Italian peninsula, and throughout history, lots of different cultures have come through, from the Romans, the Lombards, and various campaigns in the World Wars. And this has led to Prepoto and Friuli to have a busy and interesting history. Of course, this is on full display where, just up the road from the Vigna Petrusa winery and down the hill from their Picolite vineyards, we find nothing less than a full-fledged medieval castle. This is the Castello di Albana in Prepoto, and it is a standing testament to the history of Friuli. This sense of historical importance is not lost on Vigna Petrusa, who maintain a strong ties and roots to this area of Friuli, and respect that their land is important to this history. And you can see that in their logo, a Lombard helmet. But enough about history. Let's hear a little bit directly from Vero founder Sheila Donahue as she tells us a little bit more about that Schiopettino grape we mentioned earlier. Uh, I'm here at Vigna Petrusa in Friuli in the Colli Orientale area and specifically in Prepolto, which is an area known for Schiopettino. And I just uh, picked some Schiopettinos that are already red. And Schiopettino is called Schiopettino, and Francesca, who's filming this, told me about it. Because when you eat it, it explodes in your mouth. Mmm, it's gonna be good wine this year. As a side note, you may have noticed before in other parts of this video that Vigna Petrusa loves cats, and you can usually find them roaming throughout the property. So, I'll leave you here today with some videos of cute kittens of Vigna Petrusa. Leave a like down below for the kittens, and afterwards head over to the Vero shop at verovino.com to taste some of Friuli and Vigna Petrusa's wines for yourself. Thank you for exploring Vigna Petrusa's winery with me today. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye-bye!